So this episode is just putting together step by step the instruction to make a banana sponge cake and the things I learned from my banana trial videos, which you can use for so many different types of recipes like the Nutella Swiss meringue buttercream cake or the banana foster cream cake. And certainly my banana sponge cake is gluten free and it's so delicious that it fools everybody to think it's the real deal. So I recently learned there's a difference between the chiffon cake and the sponge cake. And both of them use egg whites to make the cake fluffy, with one big difference. The chiffon cake does not use any baking powder, while the sponge cake may use some baking powder for leavening. We're going to make a banana sponge cake and I'm going to use small amounts of baking powder in it. It does tempt me though to try to figure out how I can make a banana chiffon cake, which should be even fluffier than a sponge cake. And and if you remember my banana sponge trials, the first version was much closer to a chiffon cake because it was very fluffy and very soft. So I may make some modifications to it to get to the chiffon cake. It will have to wait for another episode though. Back to the banana sponge cake. Like any other sponge cake, the sponge cake is really more the vehicle to add more creams to it. And sponge cakes can have a lot of different flavors and today it's going to be a banana flavor. Now, there are not many banana sponge cake recipes out there, so I'm going to create a new one. For a sponge cake, you have to separate the egg whites from the egg yolks, and I'm showing my chocolate sponge cake how I do it. You want to make sure not to get any egg yolk into the egg white, because otherwise the egg white will not whip up nicely. I'm going to add now 175 grams of sugar to the egg white. I'm going to actually cut down to 150 because the banana will also be very sweet. I have also to prep and melt 45 grams of butter and then add 45 grams of oil to it. I have to heat up the egg and the sugar in a hot water bath to get it nice and fluffy. So I'm going to pour about two or three centimeters of water into a pot and I need to get it to a boiling point. I rather use a whisk attachment for this process because it helps making the egg yolk and the sugar much fluffier much faster. So the water is now starting to steam up. I'm going to put now the bowl with my egg yolk and my sugar on the top of the bowl. And I'm going to start slowly blending. And when the batter is nice and fluffy, I'm going to move it from the boiling water. You can check out how nice and fluffy it turned out. And that's sort of how it should look like. And now I have to beat the egg white stiff. For that, I'm going to use my stand mixer. What you're going to use is you're going to use your egg whites, put in the stand mixer or your handheld mixer and start beating the egg white it turns. What happens when you are beating egg white stiff is you're pushing tons of air into the egg white molecule which will then expand and making the egg white very fluffy white. But that normally takes like five six minutes. You know the egg white is stiff when the egg white holds its shape. To get a banana flavor as you have seen in my last video I'm actually going to use fresh bananas and I'm going to measure 250 grams. Eh, it's more or less 250 grams. I'm going to pour now the oil and the butter to the bananas because it will help with the blending. Here's my overly complex German blender and I'm going to blend my bananas and my oil until it's smooth. I'm going to add now the banana and the oil to the egg yolk and the sugar. I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of baking powder. I'm also going to add 250 grams of my vanilla sponge cake pre-mixed flour combo, which is below in my description. But before I can add it, I need to make sure that I mix up the flours again. To make it easier to fold under the flour, I'm going to sprinkle it all over the mixture. I'm also going to add now the stiffened egg whites. You want to fold under the ingredients to make sure you don't break apart the egg white. It will not look perfectly smooth, but that's okay. The reason why you want to fold under egg white and flour under the batter is to make sure that the egg white's integrity or the stiffened egg white's integrity doesn't get too much damage. If you use something as strong as a hand mixer or a whisk, and then really forcefully mix that under, you will beat literally the air out of the egg white and it will make a very flat batter and you will lose all the airiness in the sponge cake. I'm going to fill now my batter into my 8 inch cake pan and I normally have some pre-cut cake liner to make it easier to clean up the pan later. Okay, here's my sponge cake and I'm going to put it in the oven now. I'm going to bake the cake now at 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160, 170 degrees Celsius for 40 to 50 minutes, depending on the baking form. After the cake is finished baking, I'm going to take it out, let it stand for 20 minutes to cool down, 
and then I'm going to release the cake from the baking form with a cake spatula, flip it out of the cake form and let it cool down. I hope you're ready now to make a bunch of delicious fillings and have a nice banana cream cake as a dessert for any special occasions or just because you're in lockdown and you're bored and you want to do and bake and try something new at home. And if you enjoyed learning today how I make this gluten-free banana sponge cake, please subscribe to my channel and check the box to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And I see you next week. Bye!